Good morning. Hey, John. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? Pretty good. It's uh, it's cold out here, but the Kentucky Derby Trail is, is heating up this weekend. Four races. I think this is uh, this is like the the initial jumping off point. I feel like. Yeah, I think this is the first of of two week two Saturdays that have four four races. If I'm not not mistaken. Don't 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 quote me on that. But yeah, things are things are heating up. Um, this is the week I think that uh, the serious contenders kind of separate themselves from the, uh, the serious pretenders. So we'll kind of see how things progress. But I'll start with this. OK, Sierra Leone has been at the top of my list for a while now. He actually solidified that position without even running or working last week. I don't think he worked last week. I think he worked the week before that. Uh, but a horse ran yesterday that came out of his maiden race, which now makes four or five horses out of that maiden race that come back and and, and, and win. Um, and I've always been a big subscriber um, for a long time to the, quote, live race or key race theory. Uh and his maiden race is cer certainly uh, a a lot a, a lot a live race that's producing, you know, winner after winner after winner at the maiden special at the maiden special level. So um, Sierra Leone, I think it's the risen star in the bluegrass on the on the map. Uh, can't wait to see him run. I'm not an early prediction guy, but I really think that horse just has all the looks to me of a horse that's going to grow into himself. Um, and I can't wait to see him run. Yeah. Yeah. I, I saw that, um, the other day that, that another horse out of that, that maiden race came back to win. Um, yeah, I mean, he's just looked like an absolute monster, um, in, in the last couple of tries for him. And, you know, like, like you've always said, we, we want to see how these horses progress from, from two to three. So I think we'll learn a lot, uh, coming up in, in his next start. Um, and then, and then we'll go from there, but we're going to learn a lot. We're going to learn a lot about another horse in, 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 in that same regard in the Holy bull that we'll get to, uh, <laughs> and see yeah. how he progressed or if he progressed. I've got uh, questions around, around that horse. That, and and, that and I, I, uh, when, when we get to him, I'll share some interesting observations about, about, his particular scenario uh, and what it means going forward to the Derby, but we'll wait till we get to, till we get yeah. to that. Yeah. I think, um, you know, just real quick on your, your early prediction line there. Uh, you know, I think at this point, Sierra Leone is probably worth uh, a Kentucky Derby future bet in, in my estimation. I think, you know, Now's the time if you're going to do it, because if he starts one more time and, and runs off the screen or has a big effort, those odds are going to go down. So um, I feel like now would be the time to get that in. And uh, there might be a couple others that we talk about here over the next little bit that um, might get a little uh, derby future play from me here in the next couple of days. Yeah, I, I, I'm not going to bet him in the advance book because I kind of feel like if I was going to do that, I should have done it, you know, probably last year when I was, you know, really high on him. I think he closed at like 11 or 13 to 1 uh, in the last pool. I don't know what you can get on him in Vegas right now. But, you know, he can run well in the two preps, not win. Uh, and that will take some people off his bandwagon and he'd be, you know, be ready to peak on the first Saturday in May. And there's always value to be found in the Kentucky Derby, regardless of, um, of who's, you know, who's the favorite and what price they are, because there's just so many different ways, um, to attack that race and that card because of the massive size of the pools and the massive amount of what I call. Uh, I used to call it dummy money, but now I call it recreational money because it's more politically correct. Uh, there's a lot of recreational money um, and drunk money in that in 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 that pool. So there's always something to take advantage of. You know what I mean? So yeah. 
to worry about it. But this is an interesting derby for another reason that I think we should start off by talking about a little bit. Oh, yeah. So the the Baffert horses are are staying with Baffert and, you know, kudos to the Kentucky Derby and, you know, Kentucky Derby 150. You know, they keep just like dropping nuggets of news like week after week after week <laughs> to to keep everybody engaged and talking about the Derby and the lead up to the Derby. And, um, you know, this may be a little bit of a of a black eye for everybody. I, I don't know. But, um, yeah, the the owners are, are sticking with Bob and and leaving their horses with him. And, you know, he's got a couple of starters in in the Robert Lewis this weekend at Santa Anita that are going to be running and potentially taking points away from horses that, that are eligible to be in that Kentucky Derby starting gate. Hey, he's got a horse in, 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 in the Southwest that's, uh, you know, that short price, uh, on a morning line that's, you know, also potentially going to be taking points away. So, you know, it's funny, Churchill Downs has done everything that they can to keep Bob out of the Derby, uh, including the two-year ban, now extending the ban another year and actually indefinitely, so nobody knows when and if Bob will ever be allowed to run in the Derby. But as hard as they are trying to keep him out, he's kind of still in it because he's having an impact on it. Uh, people are talking about it, whether they're saying it's a non-issue and nobody should be talking about it or only the Baffert supporters are talking about it. Everybody's talking about it. And the bottom line is this. It's going to have an impact on the 150th Kentucky Derby. And, you, you, you know, that's a milestone race in the history of the greatest two minutes in sports. And I think I think Churchill Downs is kind of kind of kind of missed the boat and done himself a disservice because you don't want at least I wouldn't want and I don't think history of the sport is best served by having the 150th running of the Kentucky Derby uh asterisk or or footnoted that uh the best horses were not permitted to run uh really because of um, an extended ban and, 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 and moved gold goalposts by Churchill Downs, and also because of a display of loyalty and, and also of, of possibly horsemanship, because a lot of the owners publicly said, listen, it's not in the horse's best interest to change up their routine at this point in their career when there's so many important races for the three-year-olds right now. So do you want to move to Tim Yak teen or another trainer and then back to Bob just to try and get into and make the Kentucky Derby? Uh, you know, I've, I've said publicly before, I, I, I wouldn't do it. And I think that, you know, and this is just subjective opinion. I understand that. And a lot of people may disagree, but I think that the Derby should, should strive to have the best horses in there. If there was a reason uh, to keep Bob out, okay, there's a reason. But he served the two years. It's cut and dry. The conditions were two years, no violations, you can run. Two years, no violations, he can't run. And now you have horses like Coach Prime and Nysos running into Beverly Lewis that are potentially going to take points away or prevent horses that could get in from getting points, they may not get points, run well. So you're going to have horses in and horses not in that might be or might not be better than other ones. So the whole thing becomes a mumble jumble that will always be talked about in relation to the 150th Kentucky Derby, where the Churchill Downs, the media, the detractors, the haters, the fans, whoever it is, want to, want to admit that or not. Uh, and if you win the Derby, you, you, you know, you're always going to have to deal with, you, you, you know, uh, well, you know, the best horses weren't in there, you know. Uh, and what I personally like on a personal note is that, you know, Churchill Downs win, yields a big stick. They own the Kentucky Derby and they throw their weight around. I think that was never more evident than in the COVID year 
um, when they moved the Derby to the holiday weekend without even talking to the Preakness or Belmont people. They just said, this is when the Derby is. You guys adjust. Uh, that's not really consistent with a triple crown and, 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 a, and a three race series. And, you know, what a lot of people lose sight of is Churchill Downs is a publicly traded company. They're not here to grow the game. They're not here to promote the game. They're not here to better the game. They're not here, quote, for the horses. They're, their first fiduciary relationship and, and, and obligation and responsibility is to their shareholders. They're always going to do what's best for their shareholders. It was best for the shareholders to move the Derby to that weekend. And that's what they did in the COVID year. Uh, this year, I think it backfired on them. I think they made the wrong call, the bad call. And I think... I think they actually, without intending, gave validity to some arguments that people said were ridiculous by Bob Baffert when he first started, you know, disputing the ban. He said, they don't want to run against me because I beat them. People <laughs> laughed at that. You know what I mean? But now, OK, I did my two years, the 150th Derby. I'm back. I'm ready. No violations. I still can't run. As ridiculous as people call that argument, I think Churchill Downs validated it a little bit. Uh, you know, they don't want him in the Derby because it's the 150th and, uh, you know, it's a milestone and they don't want him to have the record uh, and the breeders are against him. I, I think their, their move with no real explanation other than tough luck, you can't run, kind of validates that argument a little bit. Uh, yeah, you know, I, I have a little bit of a different view um, on on that. I agree with with everything you're saying. It feels like Churchill Downs has kind of gone down this road, and the further they go, the more you know, the more the more shit they're stepping in as they go down this road. And this might have been, you know, uh, an oversight on their part now that you have these, these quality Baffert runners that, you know, are, are likely going to win a couple of these races and take points away from, from horses that, that would otherwise be earning them and, and get into the Derby. And I think perhaps that maybe that's what, what kind of needs to happen here. So everybody can just, you know, look around the room and say, oh, okay, like, this is getting kind of silly at this point, you know, next year, Bob, you're, you're back in and, you know, let's just move on. Um, so perhaps this is, this is coming to a head and, and, you know, the, the points and stealing points, if you will, you know, perhaps uh, is, is what kind of, you know, makes this boil over, but like to your other point, Yes, CDI is a publicly traded company. They they need to appeal to their shareholders. Um, you know, the and then your other point that there's a lot of, you know, casual money in these pools. There's a lot of casual eyeballs on the Derby. What, what limited number of eyeballs there are on horse racing these days on, on national TV. And, you know, my guess is NBC will do a little bit of a mention of it, but for the casual fans, I don't think they care. I, I don't think that they would care that, you know, the best horses aren't in, in the race. I don't know that the general public is going to feel like there is an asterisk or not an asterisk on Kentucky Derby 150 with or without Baffert. I think that's, you know, an, an inside baseball conversation for, for you and I to have, the, the people watching this show to have, and for horse racing Twitter to have. But to appeal to the, the shareholders of, of CDI and the eyeballs that will watch on, on NBC, which, you know, it seems like that's kind of where things are, are more headed, Um I'm I'm not so sure that that it matters all that much. Churchill Downs is going to promote the crap out of it. They've got people talking about it already. That's going to continue for the next three months, no and plan. people are going to watch the race. They're going to shut the race off, and then they're going to turn the TV back on in two weeks for the Preakness, and then they're going to turn the TV back on three weeks after that for the Belmont, 
and then they're going to fall asleep until next May. And right. the asterisks, you know, for the general public, I don't think they care. Um, you know, they me they, personally, they, yeah, they probably, don't. They, prob- they, they, they probably don't. And, and, and the other, the other ramification of this will be that Bob will have two or three, uh, live new shooters heading to, heading to Baltimore and probably two or three other live new shooters or one of the ones from Pimlico that, 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 that might win, um, heading up to Saratoga for the abbreviated Belmont stakes at a mile and a, and a quarter. Uh, he might win the Preakness, Belmont, and, and Travers, and, and and three-year-old champion without being able to run in the Kentucky Derby. So That'd be something. Me, it, it's ridiculous. But I will say this: if he deserved it, if he did something wrong in those you, you know two years, okay, deal with the consequences. He didn't. But I've got to give kudos, okay, because this is what I would have done, and I've said this publicly for years. If I was fortunate enough to have a Kentucky Derby horse. Nobody, not Churchill Downs, not Heisa, not High Wu, not any racing jurisdiction, not any owner's group, not any, nobody is telling me who can train my horse. You don't want my horse to run and I got a horse that good? Fine, I'll go run someplace where they welcome me in, with, 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 with open arms. Nobody's telling me who can train my Kentucky Derby horse. And I think the owners... Um, Standing by him showed a quality that amongst younger people today, uh, and I'm an older person, so I look at it differently, but loyalty goes a long way in my book. Uh, Solidarity goes a long way in my book. Being a man of your word, uh, saying what you mean, meaning what you say goes a long way in my book. And I'll go as far as to say this, 99% of the people who go out there and publicly state Bob shouldn't be allowed to run. Bob shouldn't be allowed to run a full of crap. And I'll tell you why. Okay. You take any one of those people. Okay. And you take one of their loved ones or them and they make a mistake and you put them in jail because the judge said, boom, guilty two years. And the day that they're coming out and that relative or loved one that's bashing Bob is outside the gates of that prison waiting to pick him up. And some correction officer comes out and says, you know what? He's not coming home today. We decided that he didn't do nothing else wrong. Nothing else happened. But we're going to keep him in here another year, maybe two, maybe three. We'll see when we want to let him out. Check back with us. Maybe we'll take your call. Maybe we won't. Every one of those people would be crying how unfair that was. So what they're doing, they're letting a a hate and bias for a man that they probably don't even know cloud logical thinking. And that's just, sorry to say, ignorant. uh, Yeah. In my opinion. I mean, it's gotten to a point now where it seems like the pendulum has swung and the conversation is more about, you know, Bob did his time. Enough's enough. So exactly. You know, Whether he it, was wrong. Or, and then people get mad at you because, well, he sued them and fought. Listen, you can't get mad at anybody for appealing a suspension and exhausting their rights under due process. And I'll go back to the criminal system again. There's there's something in the criminal system that's called amongst the people that know a trial tax. OK, a lot of people won't know that that what that is. But people that have faced the system uh, or our attorneys will know exactly what that is. And that says, let's say, Jim, you're accused of a crime that carries a five to seven year sentence. Okay. Before your trial, the prosecutor comes to you and offers you a plea and says, Jim, don't go to trial and we'll give you three years. Plead guilty. Now, it's your constitutional right to go to trial, okay? But they give you this offer and you say, you know, okay, thank you very much, but I'm innocent or I feel I can win and I want to exhaust my constitutional right and I do want to go to trial. Do you know what they do then? They then say, okay, that's your right and you can do it, but you know what? Then what we're going to do is we're going to take that five to seven year guideline for you and we're going to stick it to you. Because you're going to trial. You forced us to trial. So if you lose, you're going to get 10 years. 
And that pressure pressures you to want to take that plea and clear the calendar and move the justice system along, which is actually an injustice. It's a trial tax. It's done all the time. It's unfair. It goes against the Constitution, but it's done to criminals. And people don't care what gets done to criminals, in, 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 you, you know, at the end of the day. Uh, once those bars close, rights and anything like that, dignity, and, and all goes out the window, okay? Uh, so it's, it's, it's a similar situation and a similar similar analogy to me. I don't want to get too caught up on, uh, on that, but it's just wrong any way you slice it. And the people that think they support it are supporting it for the wrong reasons. And you see how fast they would jump ship if they were in the same situation and the same principles were applied to them or one of their loved ones. Yeah, for sure. Um, all right, let's take a quick time out. We'll come right back and we'll dive into uh, the Southwest. Sounds good. All right. We got some exciting races to talk about. Let's see. All right. Here we go. All right. Where do you want to start with this one? Well, I will say this. Of, of the four races, I thought that this was the hardest one to pick the winner of. Um, for me anyway. Yeah. I don't know. Where'd you land? Cause I, I've got, I've got my thoughts. I got a couple in here that I, that I like. So I guess that that does kind of prove your point. I've got four, four horses I think can win. So you could probably go like that movie, uh, let it ride and cross those four out and bet, 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 bet some other ones. But cause I've always noticed that in my handicapping, when I have a lot of contenders, I'm wrong more than when I have very few contenders. You know, when I like one or two, my percentage is a lot higher than when I'm scratching my head and and and, and need to use um, three or four. Uh, but uh, one horse that really caught my eye was Otto the Conqueror. Uh, he just looks like a horse that brings it every time that's going to probably improve with distance, doesn't need the lead, but it's going to sit close. Uh, you can't fault the barn at all. Uh, and I, 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 I think he's a serious contender in, in here. Uh, Winstock, um, Bob Baffert's horse, uh, you know, coming off that Los Alamitos Derby, absolutely. When Bob goes to Oakland Park, he's almost always live. His percentage there is is r ridiculous in these Derby preps. He'd been winning them as far back as I can remember. Uh, when I lived at well, well, when I stayed at Arkansas for a couple of meets um, years ago, he shipped in and won with horses that weren't even supposed to go as far as they did like Cupid and uh, what was it? Secret edge, a couple of others, just, just, I mean, I mean, he, he just brings them to run. Uh, and Carbone is a horse that we talked about uh, after his maiden win on our very first Derby radar show as a horse who wasn't on anybody's radar then and, and, and just ran well enough um, to catch the eye and possibly be a Derby horse. He stretched out, you know, will he be the speed of the speed and, and, and outrun these early? I don't know the answer to that. Uh, but at the end of the day, I think the race sets up probably with the pace best for liberal arts uh, coming from off the pace for 
um, Robert Medina, who is a sharp trainer. A lot of people may not know this, but Robert Medina was Shug, Shug McGay's assistant for a long, long time uh, and was around and saddled a lot of nice horses for Shug uh, and has been on his own for, I, I don't know, I'm bad with times, two, three years now. Uh, and this might be one of the nicest ones, if not the nicest ones, the ones he had. And this horse uh, has a hot Oaklawn rider, an improving young, hungry rider on him. Uh, I think he's going to be running late. I think the pace works for him, but the uh, track configuration and the circumstances work against him. This is one of the short stretch races at Oaklawn where they finish at the 16th pole and 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 at the first wire. Um, and, you know, I'm against all of those ridiculous configurations that they come up with. Uh, I think there should be one wire um, and none of these short stretch abbreviations, but that's just me. Um, so I think that works against them, but the pace may help them. And this guy's hot riding at, at that track may help him. But those were the four that I thought going in and probably coming out are the ones that may be and or remain on the Derby trail. Yeah, I agree with you on on liberal arts. That's where I I landed. Um, probably my my top choice in here for the simple fact that I think the the pace is going to set up um, pretty well for him, and uh, he's he's shown a solid enough uh, late run in past races uh, that that really caught my eye. The other one that I was interested in was uh, this Mystic Dan. So in the the Smarty Jones, uh, I thought he was he looked like he was moving really well and kind of carried that momentum into into the stretch. And you know, it says he finished fifth, but there's uh, a bunch of horses that all kind of finished within a a couple of lengths of the lead. And um, t- tell me if if this makes if this makes sense. Um, I feel like he looked like a horse that just got passed more so than, than got tired, um, late in, in that race. So this race is a mile and a 16th, like, like the Smarty Jones was. And I feel like him getting passed late, isn't, uh, any indication that, that the distance is too far. I guess is is what I'm trying to say. I could certainly buy that, um, but I just thought, and, and my knock on him, uh, I mean, I like the price. I like the connections. They show up on big days. I think uh, Brian Hernandez is an excellent rider, underrated, doesn't get the credit he deserves. But I didn't think from out there that the pace set up for him was all that good and he would be good enough to overcome that. Uh, that that was my knock, and that was why I would lean a, 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 a lot faster to liberal arts than I would to him. Uh, and what scares me about the other ones we mentioned were that they just might be um, good enough to maybe sit and win as far as as uh, Winstock and Otto the Conqueror. And Carbone is the kind of horse who... I'm not convinced he's just not the speed of the speed and gets out clear and they don't get him, you, yeah. you, you, you know? Uh, so it's an interesting race. Those are my four. I, 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 I see the logic behind your horse and I agree with the theory about it being passed. Um, but I just don't think this particular race sets up that, that great, excuse yeah. me, that great for him. Yeah, we'll see. Um, those were the two that that I liked, uh, Mystic Dan and, and Liberal Arts. Uh, Just Steel was, you know, also kind of intriguing to me as well. Um, but you know, I, I think he probably falls in that same bucket as as Mystic Dan and, and Just Steel passed Mystic Dan in, in the last one um, towards the wire. So um, yeah, still a couple of questions, but you know. 12 to one on, on mystic Dan. I, I think I, I might want a little bit of uh, a little bit of that. Yeah. And, and you, you, you know, I, I, I'll, I'll give a sneaky mention to the 12 awesome road only cause it's Brad Cox, Florent Giroux, first time three-year-old coming off a layoff off two, 
what looked to be subpar races. Uh, you, you know, I mean, there's nothing really in his form that screams come back into Southwest and stay on the Derby Trail, but yet they're not taking a step back with him and looking for an easier spot. They're going right after the big guns, so they must think he still has that kind of ability. So, you know, he's one that that could drop back, save ground, and come flying off the pace and and and, and maybe be a surprise in there. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he hasn't run since November, so, um, you know, we'll – I guess that's that's the question, right? You, you kind of have to take a little bit of a gamble and um, use your best judgment as to just how much these horses can improve without, you know, from going two to three and not having run in, in the last couple of months. So, um, you know, he's – and, you know, you got to respect those connections too. Brad Cox, Florent Giroux, um, you know, eight to one on the morning line. You know, I will – we might all be kicking ourselves if, if he comes home first and, and we didn't play it at, at that price. No question about it. All right. We'll take another quick timeout and then we'll, we'll head up to New York and, and talk about the withers. Sounds good. Aqueduct. Let's see. I thought that of of the four four derby preps we're looking at or points races we're looking at, this was the least likely. And I hate to say this, being a New York uh, Aqueduct winter guy, my whole childhood growing up, uh, this one looked like the least likely. Uh, to produce the Derby winner, so he'll probably come out of here now that I said that. But uh, I only really saw two horses that I thought were interesting enough and had the kind of upside that would would get my attention, not only to win on Saturday, but um, to maybe be good enough to, you know, get onto and remain on the Derby trail. And that was the one speed runner from the rail who – really got got on my radar by default and 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 i could say the same about lightline you know he he kind of kind of got on there by by default uh only because i just really couldn't get my arms around anybody else yeah i like this seminal chief in here um i think that last race was, was good. And, um, you know, comparatively <laughs> and the rest of this field is kind of bland. Um, so, you know, I, I thought this, this one had a, had a shot and, uh, you know, we might, might get a little bit of a, a little bit of a price. So that's where I landed. Yeah. No, no, no knock on him. And I like horses coming from Gulfstream going to aqueduct, uh, I think, uh, you know, you get a little bit of a, of a tough, you, you know, I usually like that, you know, when they're coming at it, uh, you know, really the winter meet, you know, or what they call the championship meet. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I mean, I guess I could see that. I couldn't, I, I couldn't argue against it, but this race I thought was the, the lightest of the three. And again, the least likely to produce. A, a, yeah. a, true, a true derby contender yeah uh i agree like nothing really uh, there really wasn't anything all that all that terribly sexy about these horses to be honest yeah i agree um it it, it pains me to say because i'm a you know an old time new york aqueduct in the winter you know in a winter guy i remember when it was the swift the Gotham and the Wood Memorial, and that was a viable and live path to the Kentucky Derby. And now it's almost 
uh, third tier. I was going to yeah. say second tier, but I didn't want to oversell it. <laughs> here's here's a question: In these New York preps, we haven't seen a real, you know, legit derby contender um, come out of New York in in a while. I don't feel like, um, and usually you see uh, the the decent enough horses coming out of New York. They end up tending to be a cut or two below the the favorites going into the derby and and they always end up seemingly shipping into aqueduct to run in the wood memorial to get enough points to get in in the starting gate and they're they're good enough to to beat the horses on on the new york circuit so in these in these races where we're you know we're still in that that aqueduct winter meet in these races, do you would you tend then to lean more towards a New York based connections? Uh, do you give them a, a little bit of a you know a, a point or two extra when you have you know Linda Rice and, and Kendra Carmouche teaming up and uh, you know Danny Gargans putting one putting one in here? Does that matter to you at all? Because they're there all year round. They're they're on that circuit in these prep races a couple months out. No, re- re- really not. And 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 to the contrary, um, at different times of year of the year, I tend to favor uh, the New York horses o- o- over the shippers. Uh, you know, Saratoga, for example, being one of them, I, you know, I like a Saratoga horse, you know, better than a horse shipping in, looking to beat them. Not, not that it doesn't happen, but at this particular time of year, uh, even into the spring, uh, March, April, I like the horses shipping in from out of town. Uh, I, I, I think you just get a better quality of horse shipping in from Gulfstream and Keeneland and, 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 and those areas. Uh, I think, you know, the barns have a tendency to send their better horses to the nice weather. Uh, so they're down at Florida at Gulfstream and Tampa. Um, I've made money over the years with Tampa horses shipping back to New York as well. And, and, and people not expecting them to win because they were at Tampa and, and, and not Gulfstream. So to answer your question, no, I really don't think that the home field advantage really applies to these kind of races at this time of year. Yeah. Okay. All right, let's. We'll head out west and save the quote. I don't want to say best because we don't know that yet, but we'll save the two year old champ for last. All right. The Robert Lewis. Hold on. Where did I put this one? Here we go. All right. Where'd you land on this one? Um, I like Coach Prime the best. Yeah. Yeah, he does seem like he's trending in in the right direction with, you know, more of an opportunity to, to take a, a big leap forward, I think. I think so, too. Um, you know, obviously, Nisos, and I hope I'm saying that correct, uh, you know, hasn't lost. Nice horse, two two really good sprints, fast, uh, no knock at all. Uh, but Coach Prime, I, I I really thought ran a big race coming off all, all, off the grass, uh, and the fact that he ran him first time on the grass, a lot of people will will, will question that and be like. You know, oh, that's not a Baffert move or, you know, what did they think he was a grass horse or, you, you know, without, without really knowing, my guess is that they wanted to get a race into him and they wanted to get a race into him at a distance of ground because they knew he wasn't a sprinter. Um, and there were just so many opportunities and just so many races that went. So they put him in there. When they put him, you know, back into the maiden, uh, on the dirt, I think he ran exceptionally well. And in the Los Al, uh, 
futurity. Um, I think he ran a good race. Uh, I think that, you know, that old uh, cliche or that old angle that we talked about is after they break their maiden, when they throw them right to the wolves or right to the, you know, stakes, sometimes they need one with that little better company and then, you, you know, come back strong. Um, I like Frankie getting up on, on, on this horse. He's riding in the, in the zone of late. Uh, we know he's looking really hard for a Kentucky Derby horse, and this is obviously not going to be it as far as we know at this point. But um, I think he's sitting on a big race. I like the blinkers off, um, and uh, I think he's the horse to beat. Yeah, I, I, I mean, he's certainly logical. I'm going to take a shot with the seven stronghold. Uh, a little green last time. Yeah, he's – no, go ahead. Uh, yeah, a little green last time in the low south futurity, but I thought that was a good uh, bounce-back effort after, you know, getting buried by Nysos in the in the Bob Hope. Um, so, you know, looking for a little bit more development six weeks since his, his last start, six or seven weeks. Uh, blinkers come on. And, you know, like we talked about earlier, these Baffert horses are going to be, you know, taking points away from some of these other connections. So I feel like everybody else is going to have a little bit of extra momentum, a little um, bit of a, an extra reason to, to try and uh, finish on top. And I like Stronghold's last effort. And he looks like an improving racehorse. And, you know, I'm going to roll the dice a little bit feel like we'll get a decent enough price and, you know, hope that we see that progression from, from two to three with a big effort to, um, you know, take down some of these uh, Baffert horses. I, I, I can't argue against him. I, I liked him. Uh, last two times he ran, I thought he was live. I think he ran good in both races. Uh, I agree with you. He's a little green, but they're putting the blinkers on, which may get him a little bit more focused. Uh, Antonio Frisu is riding as good as anybody in the country quietly out there in California. He's winning every day on all kinds of horses, giving great rides, live rides, making all the right moves on the racetrack. Um, <coughs> excuse me. No, no argument at all. Um, against, against stronghold. Um, and he, you know, it was, it was his maiden race back in October, but he beat Track Phantom, who has uh, developed into a nice little horse and probably the the early favorite to come out of uh, Louisiana on the on the way to to the Kentucky Derby. And that horse has, has progressed quite nicely. So, um, you know, I'm. Feels like Stronghold has progressed nicely too since then, and you know I'm looking for him to take another jump. No, no, no argument. Um, I, you know, in 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 summarizing it, I think there are three horses that can conceivably win the race, uh, being Coach Prime, Stronghold, and Nisos. I don't think you could just draw a line through Nisos, and I think those are the three that can potentially emerge as. Um, Derby radar contender horses right now. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We'll take one more quick time out and then we'll come back and we'll talk about fierceness returning to the races after his win in the Breeders Cup Juvenile. Sounds good. <laughs> All right, so we're on to on to Gulfstream and the return of the two-year-old champ. Yes, we are. Where were you looking at this one? Well, you know, 
I think it's obviously most likely a two horse race with one question mark. Uh, fierceness doesn't have to go forward to win. He's just got to kind of, you know, be as good as he was at two. And a lot of times what happens is people make the mistake in how they uh, evaluate the the two to three-year-old progression. Mm -hmm. You know, if he wins, people are going to think he automatically went forward. Might not be the case. He might be the same, just nobody in this race surpassed where he was last year. Right. Uh, and that's very, 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 very possible. Uh, he doesn't look like he's going to take a step back. And I actually believe, he, he, you know, he probably prefers a fast track to the mud. You know, we talked about him in the Breeders' Cup. A lot of people overlooked him in the Breeders' Cup because he won in the mud at Saratoga with a big, big buzz around him. And then he tanked in the Champagne. And then he hit a fast track for the first time in the Breeders' Cup. And he won relatively easy, and 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 Muth couldn't couldn't stay with him. And Muth is another Bob Baffert, uh, should be, would be, could be Kentucky Derby contender. So I expect Fierceness likes a fast track better. I think that's what caused the buzz, the way he was working on a fast track um, before the maiden win at Saratoga. I think he won on the on on the on, on the mud regardless and then just didn't like the mud in the champagne um but i expect him to come back with a very good race um uh, and only the numbers will tell us whether or not he went forward or not not whether or not he wins obviously if he if he runs subpar and loses then then, then we know he might not have unless there's a legitimate excuse uh but i expect him to come back running and i expect he'll be good enough to handle these uh, I like the the workouts that I've seen on video at at, at, at Palm Beach Downs. Uh, I've got no knock at all. Otello is an interesting horse. Uh, Christophe Clement doesn't go after the Derby often. This is obviously a distance horse by Curlin. He debuts at a mile first time out, is good enough to win, is good enough to win at a mile from off the pace at Gulfstream in the Mucho Macho Man. Uh, as an inexperienced horse who was thrown to the wolves, took all the money, got the job done, very game, keeps coming. Uh, if fierceness is not at his best uh, or somehow gets softened up early, I think this is the most likely horse to run at him and and and, and maybe shake him up if things get funny. Uh and I really, really thought that it came down to those two. Uh, the one other horse I'll mention because of an abundance of respect for the ability of the trainer and, and his n knowing where to put a horse is, is Chad's horse, Domestic Profit. You know, he ran really bad in the, in the Remsen uh, when Sierra Leone ran really good. Um, Door, door knock won, won the race who's, you, you know, on most people's derby radar and, and considered a very strong contender right now. Uh, this sort didn't run well at all. Manny Franco told Chad that, you know, he was a little keyed up and he thought that blinkers off would be a good move. Chad's taking the blinkers off. He's obviously training well enough for Chad to think he deserves another shot with these kind of horses. Um, and he's an upset surprise, the apple cart kind of horse that could have gone forward, you know, from two to three. And all of a sudden he's a lot better than we thought and realized, um, which can happen with these horses. So, you know, he's a, he's a question mark for me. I haven't really seen it from him on the racetrack. You know, his, you know, maiden win was good. It wasn't great, but he does look like a true distance horse, even though he's a practical joke uh, who you don't really think are going to, going to be all about the distance but he looks like you know this is certainly within his wheelhouse so I, I think I think he's a legitimate question mark if that makes any sense yeah um you know I think I think you kind of always have to respect Chad and uh Claravich stables um so yeah I can see it I mean that that 
that last race, you know, left a lot to be desired, but, um, you know, I think for me, I'd probably take a, you know, kind of prove it to me, uh, approach. Yeah. Um, and I, I've got no problem with that, but one thing I've learned over the years with Chad and, and just watching him is when a horse comes off a race like that, and I've made some nice scores betting him in this situation, when a horse comes off a race like that and he doesn't back off and go forward, um, despite the, the the bad race, there's usually a reason. So yeah. toss at your own, play at your own risk. <laughs> yeah, because, I mean, it looks like he's just stayed training consistently week after week um, and has, has been running, you know, fine workout numbers. So um who did i like i kind of liked you know obviously fierceness but you know i don't know that we're gonna get uh a price that that's playable um this c streak was interesting to me i think he can be involved early um and and you know see what happens the other one that uh and it's not here i was looking at the the brisnets was this um this one horse, uh, I thought, showed uh, some good signs of, of improvement from from one ra- one race to the next. And you know, granted, it was a you know state bred allowance, but it was a little flashy, I thought. And you know, I don't I don't know that this horse has the the speed and, and ability to win, but uh, definitely somebody that I would uh, not leave off if i was you know playing uh an exacta trifecta uh sort of play he's going to take a lot of pressure the whole way around from the inside in my opinion but yeah paco, paco's riding riding that that track really really good so i'm sure he'll work out a trip i i i i, I can't say he can't win um by any stretch of the imagination and I'd love to see Luca Panici's horse run well and him wind up with a Derby contender. He certainly um, deserves it. He's been to the Derby, you know, once before on um, Sol Volante, and I'd love to see him get there again and and, and maybe have one with his name on it. Um, guy solid as a rock, uh, yeah. as a person and as a rider. So I'd love to see that. Uh, but he's in against some really tough horses. Yeah, right. I feel like if you're gonna if you're gonna take a shot with an improving, you know, two year old to three, it's this prep and the next prep, and then that then I feel like that that window kind of closes, um, and those last final preps before the Derby, uh, the dust has has kind of settled. We we. You know, you're not going to get like these big surprises. Um, I feel like this weekend, next weekend, the weekend after that, there's every year it feels like there's a big surprise that that comes through at, at double digit odds. And, you know, now's the time to be taking a shot um, for some of those horses rather than just, you know, leaning on the you know, four to five shot. That's going to be fierceness. No argument. No argument. Uh, fierceness to me is 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 more of a horse to watch to see whether or not he's a legitimate Kentucky Derby threat, or whether he's a horse that I can hope you know wins these races big, but um, can bet against on the first Saturday in May. Yeah. All right. Got anything else? Was, no, uh, just a lot, lot of great stuff from the Pegasus up on the website. We've got a recap. We've got some some videos we did on scene. You did a nice video with uh, one of the best in the game, Pete Aiello, in the announcer's booth. That's something people uh, should be checking out. And uh, we got a lot of great stuff coming this week and, 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 and in the weeks to come. And it, we're going to be doing a couple more of these uh, – prep races by the thoroughgraph numbers and patterns. So if there's one you particularly want to see, put it in the comments and uh, whichever one we see get the most 
uh, requests will definitely get done. We'll try and get a couple of others done. So if you don't let us know, we don't know. We can't do it. So <laughs> let us know. All right. We'll, uh, we'll leave it there. Good luck this weekend. Enjoy the races. And we'll do another one next week as uh, you know the prep races start coming uh, hot and heavy now for the next couple of weeks. Sounds good. Uh, ciao for now. Hi, everybody. Dan Oman here with some exciting news. The RF Formulator, the gold standard in past performance information, is now free exclusively on DRF Bets. Join DRF Bets with the promo code WINNING. Get a $250 first deposit match bonus, a $10 free bet, and free Formulator already uploaded to your account. Access Formulator's premium features, including sortable trainer stats, race replays, personalized trip notes, and lots more. Free Formulator exclusively on DRF Bets. Nobody does it better.